a man who started training to be a fighter after watching the UFC on TV in seventh grade, right? So this is a dream that dates to him when he was 13 years old. He's won three in a row. As far as his striking is concerned, we focus so much on the back takes and the rear naked chokes that maybe he doesn't get credit for what he is able to do on the feet. Well, what makes him so tough is that that exactly what you said. I mean, he uses his strikes so efficiently to close distance and use his body length that you just don't get, you just don't have to see a lot of striking out of him. He takes everybody down. He throws those vines of his legs and his arms around you, and then you usually don't get up for four minutes. So that's the question in this matchup. That's why Sean Shelby matched this up, is because can Michael Chiesa do that to Kevin Lee, who's got outstanding wrestling, outstanding power, almost as tall as him, good boxing. This is an even matchup that's gonna test both these individuals. Well, this main event had a lot of traction, and then the summer kickoff pressure happened, and now, about six weeks later, it shall be done. The main event tonight, number six, Michael Chiesa is 29. Kevin Lee, still just 24 years old. Chiesa, the much taller party, but if you see the bottom there, Kevin Lee will have a one and a half inch reach advantage. With that, for the official introductions, back inside the octagon to Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. Sanctioned by Oklahoma State Athletic Commission, Executive Director Joe Miller. Our three judges at Octagon Side are Glenn Trowbridge, Brian Pacheco, and Marcos Rosales. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Mario Yamasaki. And now, this is the moment UFC fans watching around the world have been waiting for. Live from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma! It's time! Five rounds in the UFC lightweight division. Introducing first. Fighting out of the blue corner a wrestler out of boxer holding a professional record 15 wins two losses He stands five feet nine inches tall weighing in at 156 pounds Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada by way of Detroit, Michigan Kevin the Motafinan And now introducing his opponent Fighting out of the red corner, a mixed martial artist holding a professional record. 14 wins, two losses. He stands six feet one inch tall, weighing in at 155 pounds. Fighting out of Spokane Valley, Washington, presenting the Ultimate Fighter Season 15 winner and the number six ranked lightweight contender in the world, Michael Maverick Kiesa. I gave instructions on the locker room. I want you guys to do a clean fight. Follow my orders at all times. Defend yourself at all times. Touch glove, touch now. Let's do this. And if you had the prop bet that they would not touch gloves, go cash those tickets, ladies and gentlemen. Man, are we excited for this one. The Motown phenom, Kevin Lee, and Michael Maverick Chiesa. Only one go. man First figures to depart you OKC Let's do this. Come on. as a lightweight contender, and we are underway. Kiesa, the southpaw, is in black. Kevin Lee is in blue out of the orthodox stance. Here we go. Curious to see what Lee's strategy is. Does he want to just keep it striking with Mike the whole time? Does he look for takedowns? Right. Does he just stuff Mike Kiesa's takedowns? That's what we're going to find out early in this fight. What's the game plan of these gentlemen? And I mentioned Kiesa had taken down all of his nine UFC opponents for Kevin Lee. He's taken down nine of ten, so that's what's so fun about it. Like, who's going to use the takedowns better in this matchup? Yeah. Left hand lands through the guard of Lee for Michael Kiesa. Good early sign for him. He's got those inspector gadget arms. They just reach out so much longer than you think. Clips him with the left, takes him down. Kevin Lee using that butterfly hook to try to create some space, but again, Kiss is so long. Guillotine is one of his favorite chokes. Let's see if Lee can turn this into a double leg takedown up against the octagon fence because Kiesa did miss that choke. Lee tucked his chin just at the right time. 
Lee dropping his level, not sure he's gonna be able to elevate Kiesa here. Let's see, he does. And that's a crafty position he's in. If he takes him down here, Kiesa can transition to different stuff. He's got that arm, this arm lock. It's like a straight arm lock he's looking for. And now he's looking for a triangle. That's why you're seeing him grab that wrist. He's gonna stuff it down. Kiesa's guard's gonna go high. Now he's got that arm lock, so he can transition from the straight arm lock on the elbow of Lee to the triangle. And now he's grabbing that, that leg so that Lee can't stand up out of the triangle. Lee's right hand is in there, though, so that's causing uh, some problem for Kiesa to be able to finish this triangle. See that right hand of Lee? That stops the triangle. And now Lee did a good job defending, and now he's in the guard of Kiesa. Kiesa able to land a couple hammer fists from the bottom, now controlling Lee's posture. Lee controlling the head here. Now he'll try to posture up. Three minutes to go here in round one of a possible five. He's, Kiesa always looking for this triangle, as you can see. That's why he controls that wrist. By threatening from his back, he's able to create some space so that he can get back to his feet. So at least he's being offensive from the bottom, and that's what's going to cause problems. Good tightness from Lee to pass. Goes straight to the back. And this is where Lee said he was good as well. He said, Kies is good on the back. I'm going to take his back. I'm better at it than him. Here it is. Here's the position where both these gentlemen have had so many finishes and are so strong. Lee continuing to work off the back here of Michael Kiesa. Kiesa turning with the choke here, Dom, just over two minutes in the round. Lee switching to the body triangle, which is actually a good tactic because now Kiesa's got to move Lee to the other side of his body, as he's doing here. You're going to see, see how Kiesa put his foot to the mat. That stops the body triangle, and Lee's trying to keep him on his belly, so he has the, the torque to keep that body triangle. What Mike's trying to do is put wherever the lock is on the mat. Lee softening Kiesa up with punches here, unable to get under that neck. When the body triangle's on, when you're belly down, that's when it's Ooh. the tightest. Right here, Mike's feeling the most torque from this body triangle in this position. Yes, he's got a hell of a chin on him, but these punches from Kevin Lee starting to take their toll. Lee is hammering him right now. Those hurt very bad, and this whole round has been controlled by this back mount pretty much, so that's a lot of... That, that puts Mike down so far on the scorecard, so he might get reckless in the What's second round. Street, Mike huh? just needs to focus on defending this choke right here. Kiesa's eight rear naked choke attempts, number one in lightweight history, number two, Kevin Lee with seven, right? So we talked so much about Kiesa doing that, but Kevin Lee, very adept at taking the back and working for rear naked chokes, total strikes, no surprise advantage, Kevin Lee. And this is a hard position to keep, he uses a lot of energy because he's holding on the mic like a backpack, so it's just, you're using all your legs to do this, it's very hard, but it's very exhausting. But it's hard on Mike too, because he can't breathe, he's got a lasso like a zip tie around his gut and now that choke is in Kevin Lee is under the chin he's fighting the hands right now it's not completely over yet but it is under the chin now he's gonna switch the lock and that's where it's it and there it is Ooh, Michael Kiesa there was no tap. is there was, there was no, no tap. tap there was no tap it looked like Mario Yamasaki thought that maybe yep. Kiesa went out there was no tap here's another look you can't stop these too early now it's in, it is under the chin, and it looks like he's gonna go out, but it's not a tap. You have to tap to stop it. No tap, no tap, it is in, but it's not over. He's not tapped, no tap, no tap, nothing. And, and he's still awake when he gets up. And Kiesa immediately protested what you'd have to say is a premature stoppage from the referee. Oh, that's a rough thing to stop this main event. That is, that is so difficult. And we are gonna take another look and we're actually gonna listen to it in real time. You don't wanna take anything away from Kevin Lee here, but Kiesa was turning with it. No tap, he certainly wasn't out. Let's take a listen.
perhaps Yamasaki maybe saw Kiesa's left arm and he thought that it was going limp a little bit. I don't know. You can see that he's a little limp, but he's not out and he's not tapping. All right, we'll try to restore order after this when we return to OKC. All right, we are back in Oklahoma City. Here is Bruce Buffer now to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mario Yamasaki has called a stop to this contest. At four minutes, 37 seconds of the very first round, declaring the winner by submission due to a rear naked choke, Kevin the Motown Finale! All right, here with your winner, the lightweight contender, Kevin Lee. Congratulations. It goes into the books as a fifth consecutive win, but not without some controversy here. Your thoughts on the fight as long as it lasted and, and ultimately the end of it? Uh, you know, I did whatever I wanted. I was never in any danger, so it was just going to be four more rounds of that. If it, you know, I just followed what the ref tell me. The ref tell me he stopped. He stopped. You know, I, I'm just choking him. I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to get it in. So if he want to do it again, we can, but it was just going to be four more rounds of that, and he damn sure didn't want me standing up. You didn't see him tap or feel him tap necessarily, but did you think that you were gonna get the finish shortly thereafter? What? It was coming anyway, you know what I mean? Like, I, I didn't feel the tap, I didn't see the tap, I don't, I never do. So, I usually choke the guy until he go unconscious. I just stopped because Mario told me to. So, I, you know, I listened to the ref, I'm a smart fighter, I'm, I'm, I'm in there, I'm feeling. He was expecting me to come out in juggernaut, and I was on my toes moving, and I think that's what threw him off, and I got to do whatever I wanted. So he came in number six in the world, you were number 11. No fighter in the lightweight division has more wins than you since you made your debut in 2014. Where do you go from here? Do you do a rematch or are you moving forward? You know what I've been saying. I want Khabib, man. In De De December, in Detroit, I'm headlining that car. If Khabib don't want it, then Mike can get it in Detroit. I came here to Oklahoma. He was born here. I came here. That's why the crowd on his side. That's it. If he come to Detroit, they all gonna be on me. Well, needless to say, you've done your home city proud. Hopefully, you can enjoy this one, all right? That's what's up, baby. And Khabib, you got the date, you got the time. Let's get it in, baby. All right, OKC, okay, a little respect here for the Motown phenom, Kevin Lee. All right, Michael Chiesa, uh, I think I speak for the masses when I say you have every right to be furious here tonight. Uh, you did not tap. I know you were animated after the fight. Talk us through it from your vantage point, if you would. Uh, you know, I was just trying to gut it out, elbow down, scramble out. Uh, I'm not going to say any choice things about officiating, but Kevin, I will see you in December in Detroit for the rematch. Let's keep the hype alive. And lastly, that beautiful lady in the front row, my mother, Teresa Chiesa, I freaking love you. Thank you for being classy and sticking around to talk to us. Oklahoma City, there he is, Michael Maverick Chiesa. Tough match up there at the, with the way it ended. I mean, that's not how you want any fight to end. Lee did nothing wrong, just listening to the ref as he should have. The ref did make a missed call there. There's no way to fix that except a rematch. Heartbreaking when it ends that way. Well, and especially so for Kiesa, but also for Kevin Lee, right? Yeah, because both, because it kind of puts asterisks a little bit. Now he's got to 